Hello world, my name is Tim Russell, and welcome back to another daily game dev video. Today I'm going to talk about how I added personality, well I'm adding personality to my game, uh, and what I'm doing and kind of what I'm thinking about. So, uh, I want to kind of tell you the story, but if, if you recall a while back I, I released the trailer uh, for Battle Barn Tactics, which is my uh, tactics uh, roguelike uh, game, which you can wishlist down below. But it's basically about capturing a team, building a team, and, and chessboard tactics game pokemon meets xcom kind of deal uh and i got some feedback from somebody on twitter and they said that it looks good but the characters don't stand out they're not memorable and uh that was fantastic feedback because i had been thinking for a while like okay well first of all you know the whole art thing i've never had a game this art heavy ever and i don't really consider myself an artist so like doing all this art has been quite a learning experience, but I was thinking like, yeah, you know what? They're right. Cause like the, the, these characters are not that memorable. So what I did is I went back to the kind of drawing board and I, I took all the characters and I was like, okay, what do I got to do, uh, to, um, to make them interesting. And so I started thinking like, okay, let's take a step back and let's put every, let's add like a, a noun to every character type, right? And instead of just a bunch of different animals and a bunch of different sections, what if we take kind of the same general animal, but we like make a bunch of different versions of them? So what I ended up with, this is called the Poop Troop, and uh, it's it's a tactics um, representation of <laughs> combat pigs? I don't even know. Uh, so basically the way this works is like, some of these characters, like the cow and the horse, uh, they have poop abilities, okay? And when, like how, for example, every time he moves, he poops, right? He just, boom, he poops. And then a lot of the pigs, they have abilities that are based around uh, them stepping in poop. So when you step in poop, you get stanky. And pigs like to be stanky. So I was really thinking like, okay, how can I, how can I make this kind of work? In, and, and this kind of concept had come before, but it wasn't until I got the the characters with personality uh, feedback that I was really like, okay, not only do they need to have personality, but you need to be, kind of be able to tell like what they should do based on how they look, right? So like with the angel pig, this is a recent addition, by the way. Um, there's an angel and a devil pig, <laughs> but the the angel pig heals himself while he's stanky. So if he moves in this little poop, uh, you get stanky for five turns, and then he can heal himself. Uh, the ninja pig can teleport to poop. He can teleport anywhere. Uh, the combat pig, uh, he has Berserker. While he has any status effect, he gains plus one damage for every health lost. So he's got uh, five health by default, and every health he loses. While he's stanky, stanky with an A, uh, he kind of uh, gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And so I've been designing... I've been trying to add as much personality to this game as I possibly can. And one of my design philosophies was actually the same design philosophy I had for Phallophobia levels. And it's that if somebody is describing one of these characters to their friend, they need to be able to be distinct enough to d actually get their friend to understand which ones they mean. So like if they say the ninja pig, the, you can't, you can't be like, Oh, was it the one with the halo? That's not, you know what I mean? They say the angel pig, like that's, that's super descriptive. Uh, they say the horse with the helmet, right? Or the cow with the helmet, and so on and so forth. Like, there's no way that you can you can kind of lose these characters. And if there's ever, ever two characters that, like, you can describe the same way, I'm cutting them. And I cut a lot of characters uh, for this reason. Um, now, let me show you some of, like, the different... So they all spawn in random orders, right? This guy is the only guy that I haven't added personality to. I'm not really sure what... Like, I kind of like the idea of having a super cute pig in like the middle of a combat zone but like uh you know i i like you can do it with while keeping them on theme so this guy for example he's got pooper power he gains plus three damage while he's stanky some people have told me that this is kind of overpowered um now this is this is stuff that i kind of like tacked on to the game right and as a result like the backgrounds and some of the the props don't really match that combat feel uh but I took this into the second zone that I made that I want to show you right now, uh, which uh, kind of takes us to the next level. Uh, because I, going forward, this is kind of how I'm thinking. Uh, this is kind of like what I'm thinking about. So this next zone here, 
is the pirates. They're pirate rats. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they all have uh, a cursed status effect and a plagued status effect. And when and they also all have an ability that says their status effects never turk down tick down so even though so normally the way the game works is every time you get a status effect so the cow for example he poops if he steps in poop he gains stanky uh for five turns and stanky gives him 50 percent chance to poop on move um so that's how normal status effect works but with the pirates they're all cursed and plagued and then they have an ability where those status effects never actually tick down and this applies to other status effects as well so like if you stun them for example and they can't attack then you know that's like their weakness they, their status effects never tick down but they're also positive status effects too so they're extra powerful in certain ways so everybody has kind of this weakness but these guys also have an extra ability where um we let him move in here so the skeletons um there's a bug right now with the tree. So let me let me get an, another level to show you. You can never get through a video without a bug popping up. Do you know that? If you ever try and record footage for your game, you will never ever get through a video without a bug popping up. That's like a rule. That's like a rule of game dev, okay? Uh, so all the pirates, when they die, they spawn a skeleton. And the skeleton's power is he's immune to status effects. So the pirates, for example, they can never get rid of them. Well, they can get rid of them with certain things that wipe them, but they never tick down, so they never go away on their own. Uh, and then the skeletons are immune completely, and they're just 3-3. Three, three. And all of these guys, they all spawn, they, they all have Cursed, which means that when they die, they spawn a skeleton. Now, this works both ways, too, because Cursed uh, spreads what's in attack. Same thing as Plagued. So I just, my cow just got Cursed. So if my cow dies, he's, he's Cursed for two turns. Actually, let's let him die. Let me see if I can get him to die. Um, so he died, and I got a pirate skeleton because he died, because he died while he was cursed. And cursed uh, turns everybody into pirate skeletons. It doesn't care what kind of animal they are. Um, so this is an example of how I've taken the idea of both pirates and rats, and I've really tried to, to themify uh what it's like to live in that world and try and give some meaning to the world and try and take what people know about pirates and rats right plagued and cursed cursed or it's kind of a thing with pirates plagued is kind of a thing with rats uh and really play into that and then also make it synergistic because like plagued for example has a 25 percent chance to ki to give damage to whoever has it but when you're cursed you spawn a, a pirate skeleton and so like there's this whole like you know uh pros and cons to losing health because the skeletons are actually pretty pretty powerful they're three three um which not many not many people like he he has three damage but he's one health right like so there's not many people that are that are just straight up three damage three is pretty high in this game um so it's it's a pretty decent character so i've been really thinking about this and really thinking about how personality one not only makes the game more fun and interesting but it, it also has this effect where it's like it makes you want to it makes you want to discover and 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 push forward and and it's it's a lot more delightful to come across this stuff than i guess like even like barn animals right like it's interesting to like oh what does the pig do what does the horse do but like when you add a little bit of personality to it it's just i i feel like that was what it was missing and honestly i feel like that's what cypherpunk my other uh my stealth hacking roguelike was kind of missing too is like i focused so much on like the mechanics and stuff that i forgot to to add some world building and add some like interesting uh things into it now this is <laughs> it's called battle barn tactics so uh originally it was literally everything in barn animals we've obviously had to change the story so the story is changing into the battle barn being an intergalactic meeting place for um species of all types to battle it out uh, I don't exactly know why they're going to do that yet, but when I figure that out, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how I'm thinking, how I'm adding personality to it. Like I said, my rule is uh, if any two characters can be described uh, the same way, one of them's got to get cut. They all have to be unique enough, and I'm I'm trying my best to add unique abilities to everybody. Some of them, for example, though, like this guy, <laughs> he's got three damage and one health. Not particularly a great unit, but he's kind of cheap to capture. Uh, and he does three damage, which is pretty decent decent, but even then I gave him an ability called suspicious Where he does nothing but stare into your soul 
So even little stuff like that, even though it's not a real ability, you know what I mean? It adds a little bit of personality to the game. And I'm, I'm so thankful that I got the feedback of like adding personality because this is kind of the existing uh, path. Now, this did add a lot of scope to the game. So uh, good old good old scope creep. Uh, we got 10 weeks-ish to finish up the game. And I got a shit ton of content. So I've been drawing every single day because there's just so much artwork required for this game. Uh, launching August 21st, by the way. Wish list down below if you want a copy. Uh, but yeah, that's it. And I want to say thank you to these people right here. They help me keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, and I really, really appreciate them uh, being a part of Game of Underground. And if you want your name on this list, you can head to patreon.com slash Game of Underground. Lots of cool stuff there to help you build, finish, and launch better games. Uh, I'm going to be... I got my work cut out for me. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do this game in like a couple months. And... We'll see. We'll see how that ends up happening. But I'll keep you, keep you in the loop. I'll let you know what I'm learning and the kind of stuff I'm thinking about. But until then, uh, I'll see you again later.